planet Earth, the area we inhabit, full of thousands of signals, thousands of people communicating through different systems, different social networks. There is a new phenomenon, something taking the world over essentially, creating a new form of web celebrity. Because we can go on Facebook, we can go on Twitter, we can go on any social media networking website and find ourselves inundated with these types of new media. So many news channels, so many reality TV programs. We are simply speaking about everything that showcases a person's life, a person's personality, and a person's journey online. What I speak of is vlogging. And this, this is Vlog Nation. Vlog Nation. The rule of thirds, divide your screen into thirds this way and this way. One of the interesting things about vlogging is that early on, both the eyes and the mouth were falling on those lines. But now that screens have gotten a little bit bigger, generally it's just the eyes that are falling on the line. Because the eyes, not the mouth, actually are the most important element of your frame. I think that that says something fundamental about human nature. I'm just not sure what it is. I'm 19. I'm studying applied social studies in Dundrum. And I animate. And I play video games. And... I'm Irish. I'm proud to be Irish. I use YouTube for a com uh, comedy point of view. I watch such YouTubers such as Boogie2988. Oh, hi there. <laughs> Didn't see you there. I was just polishing my King of the Web crown. It's me, Boogie2988, and apparently you've stumbled across my small corner of YouTube. I know you've got a lot of questions, and I've got all the answers. So I'm here to help you figure everything out. Uh, angry Grandpa. Where are my pictures? Where's the TV? God damn TV! My computer! My computer's gone! My tablet! You left the goddamn door open! Chill, dude! I didn't do anything! The fuck you did! God damn! God damn! So here I am, in mine and Bridget's closet, and I'm gonna jump out at her. I don't know how long I'm gonna be in here for. I'm just ah! Sugar Conroy and uh, Sam Salvision and Ernest's Let's Cook programs. I use YouTube for my own videos. My YouTube channel name is Hyrule One Thousand. And what I do is I make uh, I I make videos about games and incorporate music into them. I'm a senior lecturer in St Kevin's College in the Film and Media course. Um, I've been involved in documentary and filmmaking for over 15 years. Primarily I'm lecturing these days, but my career started out from about 1996 to 2003. I was involved directly in production between documentary short films and major Hollywood movies too as well. Everywhere I've gone since about 2006, I've done some form of recording and then uploaded later on. Uh, primarily in the beginning was just to actually keep for my own sake, but once once the kind of social networking media uh, took over I have. So I would have an incredibly varied collection. I was backstage during a, uh, a festival in Odessa in the Ukraine and so a DJ is playing to two and a half thousand people on a beach and, uh, and what makes this DJ famous is the fact that she's actually topless and she's famous for being topless but as a DJ and I'm backstage and I'm interviewing her to my camera just for a minute or two while 2,000 people then are watching me on the big screen holding my little phone talking to her as she's talking to me while giving the concert which I thought was a lovely postmodern thing because everyone was only cheering the fact that I was blogging about her not about the actual concert. It's okay it's interesting but I don't really sometimes you know you have to be very active to be able to do it I think to get those people that are just there for 10 minutes in their pajamas for literally the whole day which is a bit you know awkward because if i did that it'd be weird <laughs> i'm 18 and i'm in sixth year i think vlogging is pretty awesome um it's people vlogging their daily lives and other people getting to access it and personally knowing the person i watch sam's television shane dawson 
Uh, just Tom. When someone says the term friend zone, what what do you think of? See, I think the friend zone is kind of like a bad name for what it's supposed to represent. Because I hear the word friend zone, I think of like some awesome place that's like a giant party with beanbag chairs and like pizza and like a ball pit. I think we should rename it something better, like like um like the moist zone. Like that would be a much better name. Just hearing the term moist zone gives me the exact same feeling when I think of the friend zone. And I used to watch this really weird thing called. Heather the Vampire. It was really funny, but it was really cool. It was just kind of like a joke thing where she'd vlog about her life as a vampire. But it was really interesting. Yeah, I loved it. People write in all the time and they say, okay, what can you eat? Um, what do vampires eat? And um, so I just want to completely sum this up for everybody. So here is um, the vampire food pyramid. Here's what we've got here. So we've got human blood, human blood, human blood, carbs. I have uh, 22 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And my biggest video with the most hit, I think, is 700. And I think at one point I had a stalker. No, we're not talking about the stalker. <laughs> I used to be really into a guy called Philip DeFranco. Uh, yes. Do you know Philip DeFranco? Yeah, 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 I used to watch all his video blogs. Yeah. Um, they're, they're good. The celebrity aspect of it, I find a little bit puzzling, but I guess, I mean, if you like somebody, you like somebody, and people are gonna look up to them regardless. Yeah. Um, what I like is that it just brings you the point of view of people that you'd never have heard before, or you'd never talked to. That's why I think it's kind of cool. Like, It's not very popular at the moment, but it could be. It's never going to be as big as America or any other country that's really popular vlogging, but I think if people just get more confident in vlogging and in the South, that could become really popular. Maybe if someone gave them a confidence boost and showed how awesome we actually really are, then maybe they could. Vlogging is an absolutely essential form of communication. Um, it has brought power back to people. Um, it has brought the essence that people have more control over the content and the message that they're trying to say. Um, this can be anything about their lives. This can be anything about a reportage of story that is of, of importance. Um, I've seen it in protests. I've seen it in conflict zones. I've seen it in places, not myself personally, where you're watching messages get out in places that have an uprising. For example, hugely important in Tunisia and Libya during the Arab Spring or the so-called Arab Spring and what you find there is that all forms of communication were blocked but people were able to get their message out. Some vloggers can definitely be uh, very opinionated. However, I, uh, I acknowledge the fact that it's their vlogs, it's their stories, it's what they want to talk about. They can be opinionated, opinionated if, they, if they want to. I think simple as. But um, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing them for being opinionated. Sometimes pain and it can be a very good thing when it comes to topics um, that people cover. Under no circumstances am I ever going to dismiss people for documenting their lives because their lives to them are the most important things that they're ever going to have anyway. And so some people can be incredibly interesting, even if they're actually doing something we would dismiss on a regular basis because we just, we're not informed enough. Some people should stick to real life. No, it's just like, no, some people when they vlog, they vlog about nothing at all. Like, well, some people, like um, the Shane Dawson thing, he vlogs about, like, funny things, he does little video things, yeah. but some people just vlog about, like, what their hair looks like today. And it's just like, shut up, no one wants to hear you. There's one Russian guy, and he just talks about his love of weapons, and he just talks about this every day, and then he goes out to a field, and I don't know where he gets the stuff, and he just literally blows stuff up. And it gets, like, two and a half million viewers every day, and, he just, and then he drops another stuff about, you know, oh, I'm getting married next weekend and all this stuff. And you hear about his life, but that's his thing. You know, it's just, you know, that's what he likes to do. I think that the thing that's been most striking to me watching all the clips that come in is how similar we all are around the world. You're looking at raw personal footage that people are letting you in on that you wouldn't normally get in a documentary. These clips are about birth and they're about love, children, illness, death. That's kind of most of the clips are kind of fall into that category. This one is a real journey into the unknown because this thing hasn't been done before. Originally, YouTube told us that we would maybe get 12 to 15,000 clips or something. And it turned out there was 81,000 clips, plus 5,000 clips from outreach cameras. It's a big director making a film 
that's different people's vlogs. It's a good idea because a lot of people aren't aware of vlogging and it would make them aware and maybe more people would start vlogging and getting their opinion across on YouTube. Irish people are not very confident talking anyway, ironically, considering we have no problem and we can't shut us up on a social scene. But if we put each other on the spot, and there's two things for that, we have an element of shame about taking responsibility. So if we record it, we're almost saying, I've got to make sure what I say is right because this is recorded. So a lot of us hide from that because they don't like the idea of being so responsible for what they say. Why I say this is because America is such a huge place compared to Ireland, which is such a small place. P people in America probably don't, don't, don't even know about Ireland, if we're honest. We're a tiny country. We are tiny. <laughs> Nothing except potatoes grows here. I genuinely believe that if the, if the social phobia and the shame part of it could be, which is slightly going, it's taken a lot longer than people might have anticipated, but it's still there. If that could be overcome, I, I genuinely think that Irish people would embrace it.